Hey y'all, it's Bo Brotherton with Better Together Life and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I built our John Siskovich chicken tractor for our meat chickens. I love this thing, it's so exciting. Alright, so if you guys have been following us, for several months I've been talking about how I was planning on building a John Siskovich chicken tractor for our meat chickens. This is the first time that we have ever raised meat chickens before and I looked at a lot of designs and this is what I came up with as being the best design for me to start off with a first batch. And it really is, there's some things I'm going to talk about at the end of things that I maybe not like about it, nothing bad but maybe things that I would modify and as you can see these birds they are getting big and they are enjoying life. But before we go over the chicken tractor build, let's show you how we got these birds as little baby chicks first. We are picking up our 40 meat chickens. A chicken tractor is not done yet, but I have to pick up the chickens. Holy cow. Okay, let's go get them. Okay, that was super, super easy. Here are the chicks. Uh, we have 40 of them. All right, so I'm back here at the house. Ollie has been waiting for this for so long. Uh, there, we're gonna eat these. These are a little bit different than our normal layers to where I'm like, hey, the layers, they're gonna be with us for like two years. These chicks are gonna be with us for six weeks. So, yeah, I'm not, just don't, yeah, don't get attached to them. Okay, babe, I need your help with the brooder. So wait, hold on, let's let, no, let's let them in there, keep them in there, and then we're going to take one at a time and dip their beaks in the water and put them over To make sure they are. Yes. I would put, maybe, I would put the food down on the ground. Okay. Are they fluffy? Can we help? If we see uh, them huddled so under there tonight, then I might drop it. Or, or together. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? But you are so cute. You're totally right. Yeah. Good at look at you. Or together. If they're huddled up together. I know. I learned the last time. Yeah. yeah. Why do they just sit and then drink? We're um, so hot already. It's, yeah, we're sweating. Um, so we still need to build the tractor. <laughs> Now, following John's book, the assembly for the chicken tractor was actually very, very easy. He does a great job laying everything out in the book, so it was a piece of cake. We chose to go with the half lap design for the extra strength, plus by doing the half lap, it does take out a little bit of weight on the frame. Although I did have a weak circular saw and smaller batteries, it was just outmatched. I highly recommend that you use a corded circular saw for this. It'll just make life a lot easier. Once we had all of the boards cut and half lapped, my buddy Josh from the Ganderfly YouTube channel came to help me build the entire structure. There's no way that I could have done this as fast without you, Josh. Thank you, buddy, so much for all of your help. Now it does take a while, but probably the biggest learning curve was bending the pipe for the first time. I've never bent conduit pipe, so it, it, it takes a little getting used to. John will show you how to make a jig in the book for bending the conduit pipe, but with us having two sets of hands, we were able to keep everything lined up pretty perfectly and we did not build the jig. Unfortunately, like many things in our world right now, hardware cloth was out of stock in many places that I checked, so we ran out of hardware cloth so we had to improvise and use some of the half inch 
by one inch PVC coated wire from our rabbit hutch floor remodel as the door cover. I really do love the look of having this black door, which is silly to think of some kind of MTV pimp this ride whenever it comes to a chicken tractor when you're just gonna put birds in there and they're gonna poop all over it. Lastly, we use a 10 by 14 white tarp from Amazon, and this tarp really makes the tractor look great on our property. I love seeing the white topped structures on the farm. We now have four animal structures with the white roofing. We have the chickshaw, we have the rabbit hutch, rabbit tractor, and now the chicken tractor. And it really does make the place look unified, and it just looks cool having this white top structure out on pasture. And you know, with all of these white top structures, it really is awesome that I like whenever they're moving and that they smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It makes me happy and it helps my channel out a lot. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now I still need to build a feeder for these birds. The thing with this is you do have this like, you know, higher ceiling and it really calls for having the waterer and the feeder hanging. Otherwise, like, like you see right in here, I have uh, a little feeder right there and then you know the little chick fe feeders. And I actually have to go into the structure in order to get those. And whenever you go in there, the birds try to get out, so it's kind of just a pain. I don't really like that, so I have just been opening the door real quick feeding them on the ground and then closing it because they like to get out. Need to get a hanging feeder and John shows of how to make a PVC, a four inch PVC pipe feeder that you can hang from the roof. It's a really cool design, just haven't gotten to building that yet. All right, so what would I change if I were to build this again? Definitely the main thing that I would do would be to give some sort of access back here in the back. It just seems like a lot of the times the birds are all in the front and I just wanna be able to grab something in the back because I've moved it like these feeders back here. If I had some sort of door or something here that I could drop this down, grab something in the back, that would be a ton of help. So I do think that that could be something cool that like, like let's say if you built the same sort of uh, front in the back, I think that it, it might take away some of the structural integrity of it, but I think it would be so helpful to have some sort of access back here in the back. All right, the sun is just coming up, so it's gonna be really hard for you guys to see, but I would kind of do the same thing with the door. If you design the door to be kind of open in two sections, you know, like a horse door to where you have the top open and the bottom would stay closed, that way, whenever you open the door, the chickens don't come out. Here, look, watch. So, probably I'm gonna have a chicken come out. So if you open this, they're gonna investigate and see. Okay, well, they're not coming out right now because I just fed them. <laughs> but definitely, whenever they're hungry, they just hop out over this. That's good news to say that they are they don't do it whenever they're not hungry. But uh, you do have this one piece of wood here to kind of keep them from jumping out, but they'll just jump out all the time. Um, but hey, that's good to know that it doesn't make that big of a deal whenever you have already fed them. Now I did come up with this little uh, waterer here that I can hang, and it is just hung by a carabiner, a little dog chain, and then a dog collar that I just wrapped to the top. I am very impressed with the strength of this roof. Like I didn't think that you would be able to hang that much up there, but it is super strong. This conduit is really, really strong and it works. Oh, see, see, there's the chickens. See, that's where they get out. I knew that they would get out somehow. All right, so the last thing that I might do if I built this again, I, I, I probably wouldn't, but because you would just be building a whole nother tractor, is making it bigger. It looks online whenever you're doing your research, it looks a lot bigger than it is, or maybe not a lot. 
it just looks bigger. This thing is small. Like if I stand up, you know, like I cannot stand up in it really. And I'm not a big guy, I'm only 5'10". But uh, you kind of have to bend over a little bit. <laughs> Go figure, this is our life, living in a tiny house and then I put my chickens in kind of a tiny house. Even if you did that, maybe what I would do is just extend it a little bit further. Instead of having these, I think these are uh, 12 foot boards, I might buy the 16 foot two by four boards and just make the whole frame a little bit longer to give them more room. That would mean that it's still the same height and width because you need the width to really stay the same for the conduit so you have that roof. But if you ended up extending it, that way you would get a couple of more feet coming out long ways. Maybe that would make it harder to move, but we have, we bought 40 chickens and we only have lost one chicken. I bought 40 chickens because I thought we were gonna lose a lot more for this being our first time. Good and bad, unfortunately, it's a good problem to have, but this, this tractor is only really made for about 25 birds. So we're almost doubling the capacity that this little structure can hold, which means that we are having to move the chickens three times a day. We just don't want them to be hanging out in their own manure. We want them to have as much fresh grass as they possibly can. So that is why we are now moving them three times a day. And it is August here in Texas. So I'm moving them in 100 degree weather every afternoon. It just gets a little tedious. So that's all my fault for putting too many in. But at the same time, I don't know if I would even want to have to deal with having multiples of these just to be able to raise birds. All right, so would I build this tractor again after I've already done one? I think I would say yes, I definitely would. Is this good for just the homesteader that you know wants to be able to put some protein, some meat in your freezer? Absolutely, this is a really good system. Is it good for scaling up? No, I don't think it would be. I really don't. I don't mind building things. I don't love building things all the time. So I, and I really don't like having multiple locations to feed chickens. The good thing, although it might be a little small, it can hold the number of birds that we have right now as long as we manage it properly and move them several times a day. I love the look of it. That's the cool thing is it looks rad out here on our property. Kelly and I talk about whenever we're just sitting on the front porch, drinking coffee in the morning and we see it, it looks sweet. It looks really cool. I just like having all of the white structures. It just, it looks awesome. I really dig it. So I, I, I like it and it's super, super easy to build. It is very light and it's movable. It's a very good, good design. I like it. I am the one who always want to have a higher ceiling in terms of money making avenues. And so I kind of think maybe I would want a bigger structure so that I could raise more birds, have some for my freezer and then be able to sell some. Because with this, if we're going to be raising these, we can't really sell a whole lot because I can't raise a lot on there. I'm still putting the time into raising 39 chickens and I'm putting the time into being here. So maybe I just need to build more. That's the thing. Put down in the comment below, what kind of chicken tractors are you looking at? What do you like with the designs that you've seen? Have you seen any bigger chicken mobiles? I'd like to know. I've, I've done a lot of research with this, but I don't know everything. So I'd like to see your comments down below. Let me know what you think. All right, so please remember to tap that like button for the YouTube algorithm. That helps us out and we'll see y'all on the next one. I got some big stuff coming. Big, big videos. This is going to be so fun. All right. See y'all soon.